Let's take a look at the story of Jesus and Lazarus. Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And the NIV has a pretty good translation, I think. Uh, I'd like to read from the Geneva Bible. Christ raises Lazarus from the dead. And a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was this Mary who had anointed the Lord with oil, wiped his feet. Um, her brother was Lazarus. So Jesus was a friend of the family already. And his sisters went unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he of whom you love is sick. And Jesus heard us. He said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And I think this is our first hint. When Jesus said that this sickness is not unto death, he's saying that it's not a physical sickness that's affecting him. It's a, it's a spiritual sickness. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And after he heard that he was sick, he abode there for two days. In this, so he stayed where he was at for two days. And after that, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. And, and it seems that this verse about walking in the night and he's stumbling is a reference to Lazarus. These things Jesus spoke. And after he said, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go to wake him up. So interesting that in verse 11, Jesus said that Lazarus is only sleeping. And the disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, then he shall be safe. Or uh, the NIV here says, if he sleeps, he will get better. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of the natural sleep. Okay, so here it's saying that the disciples thought that Jesus had spoken of a natural sleep. So it's a hint that Lazarus is not in a natural sleep. And when Jesus says, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, uh, Jesus is not talking about a natural sleep. But now in verse 14, Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not here that you may believe, but let us go on to him. So interesting that uh, Jesus said, I'm glad that I was not here so that you may believe. And I think Jesus is saying that, you know, if the master Jesus was here with his student Lazarus, Lazarus never would have slipped into this uh, hibernation or spiritual sleep that he's in. But Jesus is glad that he wasn't here because now he's able to wake Lazarus back up and through this perform a miracle. So Didymus Thomas, uh, by the way, is the founder of the Tartarian Christian nation of Argon. Argon, formerly a Christian kingdom under Prester John of Asia, established by St. Thomas the Apostle, Didymus Thomas. So, up here near the Bering Strait, near Arzareth. Now, Didymus Thomas is saying, let us go that we may die with him. And I think that Thomas is not talking about a physical death. He's not saying, let's, you know, let's all go commit suicide here. Didymus Thomas is talking about a spiritual death. And that when he says, let us die with Lazarus, he's not, you know, they're not actually going to, die but perhaps go into the same spiritual sleep that uh, that Lazarus is in then came Jesus and found that Lazarus had lain in the grave for four days already Jesus therefore saw her and wept and the Jews also wept and came with her and he groaned in the spirit and was troubled in himself and he said where have you laid him they said to him Lord come and see and Jesus wept Jesus therefore again groaned in himself and came to the grave, and it was a cave, and a stone was laid upon it. Lazarus, uh, you know, died and was resurrected in a very similar manner. They put him into the grave, and uh, Jesus came to the, st and there was a stone laid upon it, and they said, "Take away the stone." And Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said, "Lord, he's gonna stink already, for he's been dead for four days." And Jesus said unto her. Said I not unto thee, that if you did believe, you should see the glory of God? And they took away the stone from the place 
where the dead was laid, and Jesus lift up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, because thou hast heard me. I know thou hast heard me always, but because of the people that stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And as he had spoken these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with bandages, and his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. And many of the Jews which came to Mary had seen the things which Jesus did, and they believed him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Now, it doesn't tell us that when they loosed him and took off his bandages, that there was no bad smell. But I think it's obvious there was no bad smell and that Lazarus had not been decomposing. This story, I believe, is explained perfectly that Jesus was the master. and They called him master. The master has come. He was the master yogi. And Lazarus was his student. Would it be my work, I wonder, to tell the West a little of what may be discovered there, and how Christ himself, through the light of his divinity upon the truths that were known in the childhood of the Vedas? I am a Christian myself, and it seems to me clear that Christ based his teaching on a tradition existing in his time and country, and that that tradition originally came from India, and is still being followed there, passing from father to son, and from guru to chila. Consider, for instance, the healing miracles of Christ from the standpoint of the aphorisms of Patanjali. In the vivid and mysterious 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved would appear to have been prepared for an ancient exercise, no doubt practiced by the Essenes of that time, as it is by the Copts of today, and known in India as the Kali Mudra. This Kali Mudra is a self-induced trance which is only entered into by the aptest pupils of a great teacher, and then only after preparation and purification, for it is dangerous, and success in it is proof that the student can transcend the limitations of time in his own flesh. Quite properly, such powers were kept secret in past ages. Even today, they are not for the crowd, but if they do exist, and I know that they are still being practiced, then I think that knowledge of them would elucidate certain incidents in the life of the founder of our faith. Now let's stop for a moment and look at Kali Mudra. I don't know if Kali Mudra is the correct term. That's what it's being called here. But if you Google for Kali Mudra, you get a hand pose. So um, they're definitely not calling, you know, this this Kali Mudra hand pose is not uh, is not exactly what the book is talking about. But the naming seems to be correct because Kali meaning death. And mudra meaning de gesture, so uh, the death gesture or death pose um, where people think you're dead. So the term Kali Mudra uh, may be correct. It's, I'm not sure how it corresponds to the modern hand pose. It could be correctly called Shavasana or corpse pose. It is an asana in Hatha Yoga where somebody uh, appears to be dead because they have no response and the even respiration has stopped. Here's one account of Sadhu Haridas 1837, a Hatha Yoga Hindu saint. In 1837 he was buried in the presence of the whole court including French and British doctors. He was in a sitting posture, was covered or sewn up in cerecloth. Um, again very similar to how Lazarus was wrapped up in Put into the tome. He was placed in a large wooden case, riveted shut with the seal, and uh, you know he he was in there for 40 days. And after that, his apparent lifeless body was washed with hot water, massaged, ghee placed on his eyelids and tongue. And in a short time, he had recovered. The reports suggest hibernation as explanation. After a 30-day burial, two years prior, two English officers were struck by his greatly shrunken abdomen. And interesting here because, you know, a bear can go into hibernation. So the question is, 
can humans do the same thing? And the evidence seems to point to the answer is yes. Um, and that during a hibernation, one would quite possibly experience some spiritual enlightenment. But again, where the bear kind of gets fat beforehand, that would also be helpful here because uh, after he had d done this for 30 days, they were struck by his greatly shrunken abdomen. Now, Gopni Krishna does not call it the Kali Mudra, but he calls it Jada Samhadi. There are also ascetics who can suspend their breathing for days so that they can be buried underground or placed in hermetically sealed chambers for days and weeks without being suffocated. But despite such drastic measures, they often awake as one awakes from a deep sleep or a swoon without experiencing the least enlargement of their consciousness or gaining any insight of the transcendental nature. This is called the Jada Samahadi, which means unconscious Samhadi. It is a kind of suspended animation similar to that of bears and frogs when they hibernate during the winter. So, again, a hint here that humans can put themselves into a suspended animation, a hibernation, in which the breathing uh, comes to a stop, and they are in some type of a deep sleep. Now, this deep sleep is likely this, what they're calling a sickness. And Jesus said, the sickness is not unto death, but it is a sickness for the glory of God. See, they're calling it a sickness because he, he's appearing that he's dead. And uh, Jesus is saying, this sickness is not unto death, but it's a sickness for the glory of God. In fact, um, it, it might be wrong to call it a sickness in the first place, but definitely a deep sleep or a hibernation. Authentic cases of human hibernation in India of late have been accomplished at various locations and recorded by various doctors. Some yogis have been interred for nearly 30 days while in the state of Moksha. Here it's called something else, Moksha, and have been taken out alive afterwards. Whenever the yogins, by means of practicing the yoga procedure, fell into hypnosis and catalepsy, the people at very first naturally regarded them as dead. And wherein thereafter the yogins awoke again to life, it is easy to understand that they were treated with the greatest veneration and regarded as saints. When a man actually buries himself to prove his faith, such a man is the 25-year-old Professor Yashpal, an Indian yogi. A hole three foot six deep is dug and lined with floorboards, and a mat is placed on the bottom. After a few moments' meditation, the yogi steps into it. He lowers himself into the hole, and the grave is covered with more boards and sacking, and finally with ten inches of good earth. Fully an hour and a half elapses before the coverings are removed. The professor is discovered motionless, and after water is poured on his head, he comes to life, and with his heart beating quite normally. Now an hour and a half in an oxygen chamber that size might be possible, but this, this is just one example. There's countless examples of this occurring throughout history. Here's another one from America, and... Um, this guy seems to have gotten mixed up in some, I guess, evil stuff, or maybe he was just portrayed that way. But uh, there, if you want to dig up some dirt on this guy, you certainly can. However, he was able to achieve this uh, same Kali Mudra death trance in which, um, by all means, all the doctors and, and everyone present checking his pulse, uh, basically say that, said that he's dead. And he was able to come back and wake back up from that. There is nothing in the following reconstruction of the story of Lazarus that needs strain our sense of probability. First, then, let us assume, as we surely may, that the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven were given to some and not to others of those whom Christ taught. Between Jesus and the little Eleazar, Lazarus is an affectionate diminutive. Moreover, he was unmarried, which again points to discipleship. There existed some special bond, which may well have been 
of a master to an initiate. Lazarus stopped breathing. His heartbeat could not be felt. Naturally, his sisters would have thought that he was dead and sent word to Jesus, their friend. What did Jesus do? Hurry to the house that had so often sheltered him and help the boy whom he had given his divine love. On the contrary, he said that the sickness was not unto death, but for the glory of God. Words would seem to indicate that Lazarus was undergoing a step in his training, which the master did not want to interrupt. The disciples come to the master and say that if Lazarus is only asleep, it will do him well. And there is no reason they had to risk the danger of the journey to Judea. Two days passed, Lazarus is not awakened from his trance, and now is in danger. Then Jesus says to his disciples plainly, Lazarus is dead. To all intents and purposes, Lazarus is dead, for unless the master raises him, the ordeal will end in tragedy. First, Jesus says that the sleep is not unto death, and two days later, that the sleeper is dead. How better are we to account for the apparent contradiction in Christ's words than the hypothesis that Lazarus had been in a trance? No other explanation, it seems to me, will square with the facts that are given in the fourth gospel. Jesus comes to Bethany and finds that his disciple has been in the grave for four days. Martha says, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother would have not died. True, Lazarus would not have died, but each soul must go out alone to meet God. Its divine arms can only help it after it has tried to walk. The terrible moment of his tears and groaning as he draws near the tome is now understandable and suffused with new light if we accept this theory. The one being Lazarus, who could have understood the hidden side of Jesus' teachings and might therefore have given him a human sympathy, has been unable through bodily weakness to carry the burden of the knowledge given. Amongst these folks, Jesus feels himself surrounded by love, but not by comprehension. Lazarus knew a little more than they but less than Jesus had hoped. A friend has failed him, and not for the first or last time. When the stone is about to be removed, Martha says that the body will stink. So it would have in that climate, but yogis have been known to remain as long as 40 days in Kali Mudra. They take away the stone. Jesus lifts up his eyes and says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He then calls Lazarus in a loud or a piercing voice, For the dearly loved voice of the master must reach a numbed consciousness and the soul of the disciple is brought back from the borderland where it hovers. Christ speaks and there is life. Thank you. I do lots of yoga, you know. Yoga? Yoga. Oh, too boring for me, yoga. 